So that is the sound that we'll be recreating today, it is a sound that I heard from M83 Solitude. So I thought I would break this down on how I created this sound. Something I wanna try a little different today is instead of recreating the sound from the beginning, I think that I wanna just go through each individual oscillator and show you what the sound sounds like. Cause I feel like sometimes in like tutorials, they miss things, or at least from the amount of time that I've done tutorials, <laughs> I've missed a lot of things. So let's break this down individually by oscillators into filters, then into effects. In oscillator one, we have the vintage waveform. And I turned down the volume here. If you hear the little meows, it's my kitty cat. I turned the volume down in both oscillators. I increased the unison and the detune in oscillator A by taking this knob here and pulling it down, we get this re-trigger sound. That's more, you know, super saw. I didn't want that because I wanted this to be very, very tight. It's got more of a punch to it. Then in oscillator B, this is where I started adding some of that low end frequency. Turned down this basic saw wave and lowered it an octave. In the oscillator section here, I have the phase all the way up to random. Then I added eight unison and a little extra detune, about 70%. Let me just show that by itself. Then you can hear them blend together. Then it needed a little bit of flavor, and this is where I started playing a lot with the wavetables inside of Alchemy. So pretty much what I did here was I left clicked on this waveform, I said copy, pasted it here, and then I just went through the actual tables. Now, one thing that I did add here was I brought up the sync here. Now, this is a really cool knob. This is how you get kind of like one of those power sync leads, very 80s, very retro sounding. And it really added a little bit of flavor here. So let's go to the filter section. I chose a really nice filter here. 24 dB rich with quite a bit of juice on the drive here. By adding the LFO and turning it to 57.9% on a triangle waveform with half notes, you get a very nice, but it felt like it was missing something. So I ended up adding an LFO on the volume envelope as well too. I ended up using the mod effects here and just doing a little bit, 0.2 seconds, 22% in the mix, the depth all the way up, the feedback pretty screaming, and the stereo as well at 18%, which would give me this sound. And that's where the big and dirty really kind of kicks in. Then I went with acoustic reverb to give it more of that tail since it's such like kind of a drowned out sound here. And then to add some grit to it, I just put like a nice distortion here. By the way, default setting that I just took down the mix for, I turned the time up pretty high, ridiculously high. 10 milliseconds on the pre-delay, 100% on the size with diffusion of 50% and this was default. Then we added a little bit of distortion. No bit crush, no mech, a little bit of tube, a little bit of crunchiness, turned it down a little bit and left the post gain where it is. That came up to this sound. Then I went on to process it here. Inside of the channel EQ, I went to the processing and I switched this to mid. A little bit too much low end and then tamed it off a little bit here. Then I added another channel EQ because on the current version of Logic that I'm using, you can't process mid side, you can only process one at a time. So I added another EQ, set this to sides only and I cut up all the way to 780 and then I put quite a bit of top end up here just so it gives it a little bit of depth. This is something that I learned from watching the tutorials from Noisia. This compressor here is just to give it a little bit of taming. It's pretty close in the ballpark. Definitely needs a little bit more work, but I think it is a great starting point, especially for songwriters trying to get into the synth world. Now for the second part of this, I would like to take this sound and give it a little bit extra juice. Let's say that you're more into like more distorted sounds. So 
let's talk about how I got to this part. I started with the distortion first. That's kind of how I think. But in this scenario, I'll just go ahead and show you what I did. Cut out the 20 hertz, right? And just took out a little bit of this low shelf here, about 7 dB. Now, fun fact about distortion, if you want it to sound crunchier, the more bass you have, the less distorted it will sound most of the time. I'm not gonna tell you that that's true or not because I've also been in the other scenario with making like electronic kick drums where I've boosted the bass end and gotten really, really interesting distortion and tails. But if you want more of a really crunchy sound, try taking out some of the low end first, adding a distortion and then bringing it back. Here, I played a little bit with both. This was kind of like the fundamental frequency that I was hitting for. It's about right there, see? This is probably my favorite distortion uh, when it comes to making interesting sounds because it's such a weird plugin and by itself can sound horrible, but tastefully placed sounds amazing. When you're playing around with these synthesizers, please play with the phase reverse. Now, before we talk about what the phaser's doing here, I wanna go in and I wanna talk about this last channel EQ and this last distortion. This is what I was talking about earlier, where boosting some low end sometimes with distortion gives really, really interesting tails. This, without the distortion, sounds like this. Which sounds amazing as is. But let's turn the distortion on. But let's say that we wanted to add a little bit of extra color, specifically in the mid range. I love using phasers at this part. Do you see how much more character your synth has when adding a phaser? So let's talk about some of the things that I play with. Usually when it comes to the phaser, I have the mix up 100%. I want it to color. We can also go the opposite way. In this scenario, I liked 100% better. I don't really play with the feedback, but I do like the warmth, which is more of like a little bit of a distortion. Playing with the ceiling here and just having it a little bit, not, not far, just right next to each other is the best way to get some coloration. Now, if you found a preset like I have that you really like and you wanna play around more, just go ahead and hit copy. And then we can play with the stages here. Which will also play with the color colorization of the sound. I don't know, I have a lot of fun making these synthesizers and I feel like a lot of people will jump just straight to Serum or Silent or like, Atmosphere. And I'm not, I'm not dissing on any of those things. I just want you guys to remember that you have a beautiful synthesizer inside Logic. It's called Alchemy. And with a little bit of love on the plugins, you can make some pretty impressive stuff.